same face that this world has forgotten. What's up guys? Now, before going into the course of the Wi-Fi battle of the day, I'm just going to tell you guys that I'm actually started a Discord group called The Battle, which clearly is an invitation that I want you guys to join it. It's going to be linked down below. And it's basically it's a way of you to actually, of course, battle me, but also battle other players in, of course, the Pokemon community. The purpose of this channel or Discord group is basically to gather people that want to battle by Smoke and Tears. So feel free to join us, and, well, I'll see you guys there. Ooh, what's up, guys? And, of course, welcome back to another, of course, Pokemon Wi-Fi battle now, which is, of course, the Skyrender. And today we're going up against Robotnik, which also is actually a YouTuber, so I'm going to link his channel down below. And, um, yeah, I had a voting, of course, Twitter, where I asked you guys which Pokemon you want to see me using. Turtonade was the fortunate winner, has really, really have a tough time trying to solve this Pokemon. Now, I have different teams and definitely just tried to make Turtonade work. Uh, haven't been that successful, but this battle overall was really, really, really interesting because neither of us is actually overdoing it. Uh, this is definitely one of those Wi-Fi battles I feel that the opponent is very, very aware of what I'm trying to do, that I'm not being super, super heavy meta. And at the same time, it's still a very competent build team. Uh, with, of course, Rotom, Heat, uh, Torkoal, um, Reuniclus, Trevenant, Comfy, and Gastrodon. There are defensive responses here. Torkoal, Rotom, and, of course, Gastrodon are very, very hard to break, uh, actually, even with, of course, a possible Grass Earthquake. Rotom Heat is one of those Pokemon that really stands out in tier. Um, while manageable, it still is one of those Pokemon that defensively can be super, super confident. Uh, I myself is using a Life Orb Hillelisk, uh, Delmise with Leftovers, Life Orb Bruxes, Zone, uh, Zone, C, <laughs> C, Dark UMC, uh, Honeclaw, um, what do you call it, Durant, uh, Eviolite, of course, Gly Gligar, and of course, Shell Smash, Sugar Berry, Torkoal. So, yeah, really, with, of course, any further ado, let's, of course, go into the match. I'm actually going to leave with my, of course, heal list here to get to go, as it was overall the smart choice. And he leads up with Rotom Heat here, which is just great. Now, I was expecting him to possibly be Scarfed, and if so, I wouldn't think he would go for an Overheat, just go for a Volt Switch. He is Scarfed, but he goes for Overheat, and that's actually KOing my heal list from just turn 1, which is just great. Definitely not the strongest player from my side, but I do get a strong chance of actually setting up a sword stance with my Mafogli, which of course is my um, Bruxies, yeah. So a sword stance really, really does punish his team really, really heavily, since it's by theory actually outspeed his team completely and one-shots everything after a sword stance outside of course the Rotom. And uh, yeah, Torkoal comes in. It's no biggie, Psyche Fangs will just ruin it, it doesn't take it, it nothing takes it, it's, it's so great. But this year is due to Draught, uh, he will now be able to actually bring back his Rotom and Aqua Jet will not KO him uh, due to Draught itself, so I need to switch out. And my best switch in here was kind of Gligar, I kind of predicted him to Volt switch against me, uh, either, either that or Thunderbolt. So I had a given opportunity to actually set up rocks if I so decide. And I really was thinking about it for quite some time. So it was either that or Toxic, but Stealth Rock felt like the overall smarter play because it doesn't have anything that can take them away. Now the Core Torkoal is gone. Now I will decide to stay in, just go for a curse. I was predicting to probably lead seed. It was either that or trying to actually set up. And uh, Toxic might actually be a very weird play, but at the same time was basically scouting for Lumberry. But it's a curse set, so that's no Lumberry. That's the Citrus motherfucker. And that means that he could possibly stall me out, even with, of course, the, um, the Toxic in mind. There is really, I won't do enough damage at the same time. Curse is doing a whole lot. He is going to have Harvest with Draught in mind, and he can lead seed me. There are a lot of factors here. Gligar eventually can faction, probably fall. So I'm going to switch into my T1000 Determinator, mainly because the sun is up, and I can Fire Blast, and that's just something that I want to do. And definitely, of course, under the sun, as uh, <laughs> I was predicting whether or not I should shell smash here already. But since I lack hidden power grass and Gastrodon, by theory, does kind of wall me. I decided just directly go for the fire blast as Gastrodon, which of course is safe switching, comes in. And during the sun, one would believe a timid, monstrous fire blast would do a lot, but no, it does not, because the Gastrodon is freaking fat and we are really not liking Gastrodon. It's such a good Pokemon. I don't know why people are hating on it. 
It is a Pokémon that defensively is very, very, very capable. So I'm gonna switch in my Socrates, but of course my Dolmese, predicting the possible Scald, as we did Toxic, and I was like, okay, that's bad. <laughs> that's that's not what you want. That's not what definitely not what you want to see. As uh, I'm basically feeling, he's not gonna stay in with his Gastron. You just go for Shadow Claw. It felt like the smartest play I could do. As of course he's switching his Trevenant, predicting of course the Power Whip. And uh, we gotta smack him. Here's the thing though, it's very likely the Power Whip actually would have taken him out too. Mainly because Power Whip, if landed of course, is such a strong move. It, it really is. As uh, we know, we get all kinds of residual damage here. I mean, it's it's not it's not a good time. Soccer Dresser really is free fun with Toxic in mind. As he's switching his Rotom. You know, you know, if it goes for Overheat again, it will only mean one thing. And that is that I can switch in my Bruxes yet again and go for a Sword Snaz again. But it actually goes for a trick. And I was like, oh man, no. That's that's not what I wanted to see. That is most certainly not what I wanted to see. Uh, as of course Shadow Claw takes him out. Now, here's the thing. Sure, the crit did matter in that fashion, but at the same time I was scarfed from here on out and it was very likely that he couldn't switch out with Stealth Rocket Mine. So it was I think it was screwed no matter what. As Comfy comes in. Now, here it might be a weird play, but he was probably predicting me to switch out since he went for a lead seed as I go directly for a Shadow Claw. Um, I do, don't do as much damage as I wanted to, but I really want to force him to go for Synthesis so I can switch in my Durant and go for a possible sweep. I am basically looking for situations to set up and wrap up. As he goes for Synthesis, we're now in a pretty awesome spot. I mean, there is nothing stopping this Durant whatsoever. I can just safely go for a scene Horn Claw. He's definitely gonna switch out as Gatron comes in, and it's a fair switch in. Uh, I don't carry Exis though, I carry actually Crunch over it. As uh, so we are Iron Head, Exiso, and. No. Damn it. Iron Head, Crunch, and Superpower. Crunch is mainly there because Jellicent is a thing, and I really don't want to deal with Jellicent too much. So I thought that that overall is smarter play, but it may or may not actually be because we do miss out on the KO. But what's even worse is that he's gonna go for a C move himself, and not only that, it is the C move stockpile. And all of a sudden, my my setup won't matter at all because he's now full HP at plus one plus one defenses, and um, I can't touch him. I can't touch him. I am basically forced out. You know, I have to go to Socrates, of course, being that of course I'm already toxic. I don't raise the possible skull burn. But yeah, here I was basically thinking, you know, what could I even do at this point? What can I do? I mean, what else is it to say? I need to go for a power whiff here, I really, really, really do, as he's gonna bring in Eddie Boy, and he will do a lot here, it would do a really big chunk, but at the same time, you know, Draining Kiss is very likely to KO, um, and that's not a good thing, that is really, really, really not a good thing, and plus, you know, I'll probably die just Toxic alone, so I have to switch out because Gastrodon are really scary now, I mean, it was scary before, but I was scarier, I really thought I would let that Pokemon down, but it's not an area for sucking fangs either. I am basically trying to find some kind of footing, as from this point out, I'll actually go directly just for a Toxic. I really want to start with this thing down. I don't want to see this thing being a possible call mindset, uh, because if so, then I'm really, really are forced to try to wheel it down by stall. And Gligar is my best response to that. Gligar is amazing in the tier at the moment. Though a momentum killer is a good defensive shake for a lot of offensive threats, such as, um, I don't know, here across. Uh, anyway, <laughs> so he's gonna bring in Bubble Boy, and um, look, here's the thing. It's, we don't see, of course, the self rock damage. It is definitely, of course, Magic Orb and, or Life Orb, uh, or I was gonna say Magic Guard. It's Magic Guard, what I'm trying to say. I, I, I can't say it. I'm gonna hard switch Sealon here, basically hoping he goes for Calm Mine. But it goes for Trick Room. But that's okay, Focus Blast may actually not kill us. It's a game line willing to take as he has hit a far far like a fuck it. That's that's no good. That is no good at all. So now I have basically have to actually stall out the uh, possible trick room turns. As I see Side Shock, I'm thinking, oh that's that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Side Shock is a good thing. That means that he possibly could have Shadow Ball. And if he has Shadow Ball, that means that Gligar will basically wall this Pokémon. So, it's no threat for Gligar, 
was basically done for switching out. We could probably roost all through all of that as I'm gonna switch him back. There's now two Pokemons whittled down with, and we're free for free. What the fuck happened? As he goes for a side shock, so that's definitely his strongest move against me. And as you guys can see, strongest is a definition of nope. As Earthquake just roughly 50% of what he had, it definitely looks like it's KO him with the next Earthquake. As um, I'm just so shy of a KO, it's not even bad. As he's gonna set up the trick room again. I don't think it'll fine. I know exactly what I have to do, and whether or not it's worth it is debatable, but I need to be that man. That man who really, really capitalized on every stalling capability he has as he goes for Gligar and goes for Roost. That goes for Gligar. Go for Roost. I'm gonna Roost stall him as he fucking realized that I'm being a dick and switches out to Gastrodon. Now, here's the thing I am at full HP, and I was thinking as long as it doesn't carry Ice Beam, I should be fine. It's either that or recover that it carries. So I'm gonna go for a Toxic. Uh, Skull should not be a 2-8 KO on me, it definitely shouldn't, as it is close to be, but with Burn in mind, it definitely is. I do get a Toxic off here, but yeah, I really was kicking myself here a little bit, because it would have been an overall smarter play. Probably Rue stalling the Trick Room turns again, and not make, of course, makes need with, of course, the, um, the Toxic, or I mean, the, it whittling down is what I'm trying to say. I really wanted that momentum, I didn't get it, and now I'm pretty screwed. And of course, I lose my Gligar, and I was thinking, you know, what what else could I do now? I only have a, a freaking Toxic um, um, Delmise and my Bruxes. Luckily, luckily, I still Twisted Dimension to turn to normal, and I'm gonna switch in my Delmise here. Basically, what I want to do is go for a Shadow Claw. I really just need to KO things. Uh, he goes for Bubble Boy, sacking that. That's definitely the right play to do, as um, I will survive the Toxic, but... My biggest issue here is, of course, that um, it's very, very likely that, of course, he go for Draining Kiss with his uh, Comfy, and I am forced to bring in Bruxes here, hoping for the best, basically. As uh, Eddie Boy comes in, and basically I'm going for Shadow Claw. I really was hoping here it wasn't trying to attack me. Of course it does, it makes no sense why he wouldn't. As uh, I lose Sucker Tress or my little knees right here, Bruxes is my last Pokemon, and it's whether or not that can KO Gastrodon here. Uh, so, yeah, at this point I was feeling, you know, I can't set up versus this Pokemon, mainly because if it is a Call Mine set, I'll lose a lot of damage output. As it goes directly for Draining Kiss, that's a good thing. It definitely could have been a setup opportunity, but at the same time, you know, had it had the likes of Giga Range, something like that, it would have whittled me down quite a lot. It was definitely not worth it. Definitely not worth two of those, as his last Pokemon is, of course, a Gatron, and uh, a Psychic Fang at this range may not kill. It definitely may not kill, I need to be at plus two, so I need to go for a Swole Sand and risk the possible Skull Burn as uh, a base was making it. It's either that or he goes for Stockpile, but I am more lucky than that. He goes for Recover, and that means one thing, that we won. This means he could definitely not take it. There is no way in hell to take a Psychic Fang. So this is a very extremely narrow 1-0 in my favor, and to Robotnik, this game was great, such a great overall play from the both of us, and was definitely down to wire, good job, buddy. And yeah, if I really have to go to a more in-depth with the battle itself, uh, the one thing that stands out is Robotnik's way of playing against me. I mean, I'm a hyper-offensive team, and this is a 35 turn battle. That, that is very, very, very rare to see. My offensive play was not on par with his defensive responses overall. The Robotnik played this game great, and he did a, such a strong comeback with, of course, Reuniclus. And, of course, the stockpile on, of course, his Gatrodon. And I was really probably feeling a bit dumb having Crunch over Exiso. I've been in a situation where I had to have that, and uh, it may or may not actually been worth it. And definitely, since, of course, he's pulled up the stockpile, I'll say that, you know, I'm, I'm the fool at this point. But, yeah. The only thing I can say is that, you know, he avoided two setup situation. He didn't survive the last one at that point where only was one Mon left. I mean, come on, that is that is some good strategy right there. And, you know, I'm really, really am proud to say that I think Robotnik played this game very, 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 very strong. And I, I think I played this game very well, too. I mean, we're definitely on a par with one another on predictions. And I think, overall, the game was really, really even due to that reason alone. So, Robotnik, thank you so much for battle. Make sure to check out, of course, Robotnik's channel, which will be linked down below. And, of course, with that said, thank you, everybody, for watching, and I'll, of course, see you in the next video. Until then, of course, take care.
Bye.